Persia. Precision engineering, as sharp as a knife, unmatched racing pedigree, and the very definition of what makes a driver's car. All this found usually at the cost of expensive pricing, a notion shattered by the very car that saved the brand. The 986 Boxster is undeniably brilliant, a mid-engine, perfectly balanced manual roadster. And to find these qualities in the vicinity of just $10,000 is an opportunity to be seized. And today, I'm going to show you exactly why. Sitting behind the wheel of the 986 Boxster, I first want to talk a little bit about the history of the car and why they were so important. Back in the early 90s, Porsche was in a rather precarious situation. With sales dipping to all-time lows, it looked as if the end might have been near. However, in 1993, Porsche brought something to the Detroit Auto Show that would change everything. This was the 1993 Boxster Show Car, a concept of what was yet to come. The purpose of this 986 project was to create a more affordable sports car in the form of a mid-engine two-seater roadster, moving away from the front engine layout of the preceding 968. And seeking to tap into a market that was left largely untouched. The 986 Boxster hit actual production in 1996 with only one major change from the concept being the intake location. The Boxster debuted for about 75% of the 996-911, its big brother, which it shared almost 40% of its parts with. This plan succeeded and saw Porsche turning over higher profits each following year, and oddly enough, these cars sold so well that many had to be produced in Finland because the German factory was at capacity. This particular car is a 1999 model and was assembled in Finland, something that you can figure out by the VIN on each car. And it's very likely that without this particular car, Porsche may have been a thing of the past, something I believe every enthusiast is probably grateful for. Getting into the Boxster's performance, this engine is a 2.5 liter naturally aspirated flat 6 and actually the first water-cooled engine from Porsche that was not found in front of the driver. This displacement was upgraded to 2.7 liters in the year 2000 or 3.2 liters for the Boxster S. This particular variation makes 201 horsepower and 181 foot-pounds of torque, and although this may not sound like a ton, in a car that only weighs 2800 pounds it can really be felt. The power band really seems to favor higher RPM, with the engine and exhaust note becoming a completely different character at or above 4000. The flat 6 found here still replicates that same Porsche sound we've come to love, despite its smaller displacement. The engine's responsive, and it's well engineered for track use. It carries a ridiculous 10 quarts of oil, some of which is found in reservoirs that prevent oil starvation and high force cornering. Admittedly, the IMS bearing is an issue on these cars, and this engine was really kind of one of the first places we saw it, and although this was a problem that was fixed in later generations, it is definitely a risk that you take, but one that is also worth taking. This engine can be mated to either the Tiptronic Auto or a manual transmission. Considering the purpose of the Boxster as a driver's car, I personally think that the manual is a must. The 5-speed feels great with lightweight shifts and the clutch is easy to modulate. The pedal placement is perfect for downshifting and makes the manual incredibly enjoyable. And perhaps the biggest area of Porsche's genius comes into play when discussing handling and suspension. The mid-engine layout of the Boxster creates a near-perfect 47-53 weight distribution, putting the center of mass right in the middle of the wheelbase. And considering that objects rotate about their center of mass, it's no surprise that this car rotates with such ease. The McPherson-style suspension is tight and works well in conjunction with the rear axle, which is capable of mid-corner toe correction. All these components combined result in a cornering weapon, with understeer and oversteer nearly non-existent. The car grips well and stays flat in a corner, an experience that can be enjoyed through loads of steering feedback, a product of a simple and effective hydraulic steering that is equipped to each Boxster. It is truly the ultimate affordable driver's car. With all the speed a Boxster can generate and retain within corners, it was important for Porsche to get the brakes right, and they definitely did. The four piston Brembo calipers and large vented disc brakes on each wheel provide ample stopping power and are suited to performance driving from the factory. Now, before we get out of the car and go in depth into the features that it has to offer, allow me to leave you with a minute of raw driving footage to give a better idea of what the Boxster is like from the driver's seat.
Now that we're standing outside of the Porsche Boxster, let's talk a little bit about some of the exterior features as well as the styling. So first and foremost, you'll notice that the Boxster is a very sleek design, and this is done intentionally as this car has a 0.31 drag coefficient, which is one of the lowest that we had seen at that time. As for the front end styling, the headlights seem to be a major point of criticism by many, but I personally disagree. I think they look a lot like the 911 GT1 headlights, which in my opinion is one of the best looking cars ever made, so I absolutely love the way that this front end looks. The two other things to note on the front end of the car are the massive front trunk space that you get, which is achieved through the suspension style that they use, which we will get to later. But this is a massive front trunk. You could put so much stuff in here and the amount of storage in a car of this size is truly incredible. The other thing is that there are two radiators housed in the front end, split up to both sides, which channel cooling back to your mid engine and allow you to keep your oil temperatures down. And the last thing that I wanna to touch on kinda of at this area of the car is the paint. This color is known as Arena Red and Porsche, as always, makes very high quality paint. It has a nice metallic flake and sparkle to it and in the sunlight really does look incredible and bring the design of the Boxster to life. Getting into kind of this front wheel area of the car, there's a few notable things to talk about. The first is these cast alloy wheels, which are extremely lightweight and factory come as a 16 inch diameter, but you can be optioned as a 17 inch diameter, which is what we are looking at here. And the big difference that that makes is with the 16 inch rims, you get a 205 width front tire and a 225 in the rear. When you upgrade to the 17 inch rim, you end up getting a 255 in the rear and retain the same 205 in the front. Now, they normally come with Continental tires from factory, but this owner put Michelin Pilot Sports on it, which is a much grippier tire. As for the braking system, there are vented disc brakes on all four wheels with Brembo four piston calipers, and that certainly gives you a lot of stopping power. On top of that, there's a brake cooling vent that's actually attached to the suspension, so it travels up and down with the wheel and supplies a constant supply of cool air onto the back of your brake rotor to keep your brake temperatures nice and cool. Finishing up here on the suspension style that I said we'd talk about is the independent McPherson style struts, which allow the car to have much less space taken up in the horizontal direction. And that allows us to have that giant front trunk as well as fit the engine in the rear. On top of that, there's a neat suspension trick in the rear that we're gonna get to. So talking a little bit about some of these cabin features, the Boxster is a Roadster. So there is a soft top convertible that can come up and down. Now, importantly, it is actually actuated with an electric motor, something that the BMW Z3 of this exact same year did not have. So if you're in this class of car, that is certainly an advantage. As for the actual mechanism that brings it up and down, it's just a simple latch and the press of a button inside, and it takes 12 seconds to go from top up to top down with pretty much no effort needed. It folds into a really interesting Z shape, which actually achieves two things. The first is that it keeps the inside part of the top from getting dirty while folding, and the second is that it allows it to be stored into such a small space, which allows us to fit the mid-engine in the car as well as still have a large trunk space. There's also some interesting structural things going on in this area. First off is this steel tubing bar that comes behind the driver's seat. So if you want to take a car like this to a track day where it really belongs, you can ensure that you're going to have that safety in the event of a rollover. On top of that, the entire windshield frame is also lined with steel tubing to allow for a lot of cabin rigidity in the event of a flip. Two more things to note here, as this is a mid-engine car, your air intake for the engine is actually found right here. And the last of these is something that is actually aftermarket. You might notice the shape here is different than you've seen on other boxers. And that's because this is what is known as the Speedster humps. So the original Porsche Speedsters kind of had this shape with that Roadster style of car. And there's actually an aftermarket solution for this. You can buy a part out there that when the top goes down, basically just kind of goes onto the top of that, changes the entire so side profile of the car and makes it look a lot more like that original and traditional Speedster. Something that I think is a really cool and worthy add-on. Now the rear wheel is pretty much the same as the front in terms of braking and the wheel itself. Obviously it's a wider rim with that wider 255 tire that we talked about. And the suspension is pretty much the same with the exception of one thing. And this is what Porsche calls the Wysik axle, which basically corrects toe angle while in the middle of a corner. A very advanced system that certainly is one of the things that puts Porsche a step above everyone else when it comes to fine engineering. And lastly is this kind of rear portion of the car, which is where the rest of it really all gets tied together. Your soft top comes down right here. Your 2.5 liter flat six naturally aspirated engine is housed right in here. And you get another pretty big trunk space back here that can actually hold two golf bags, which is super impressive considering that the front trunk is already as big as it is. 
As we come down towards the back, there's only two more things to touch on. That is this spoiler, which actually comes out of the car at 60 miles per hour, and is pretty much active aero all the way back in 1999, which is really cool. And the final thing is your exhaust down here. It's just that nice center tube, like the classic Porsches, ties the entire back end together, and it's just a really elegant design all around. So now sitting in the interior of the 1999 Porsche Boxster, this is the spec known as Savannah Beige, and I think is a really nice complement to the Arena Red on the outside of the car. Now, this is the leather interior package, which if the car is not optioned with it, it will be much more plastic pieces everywhere, as opposed to this nice leather material that lines the entire dashboard, the sides of the doors and whatnot, and really just spices up the interior. As for kind of the driver's area of the interior, the steering wheel is a nice leather material, has a nice 9 and 3 hand position, and can be adjusted to the driver's preferences. The tachometer is in the dead middle of the car, as you see in most Porsches, which is a really intriguing design and keeps you engaged with what the engine is doing as you drive the car. The seats are full leather, have great bolsters, and hold you in during any kind of high force cornering. The rest of the interior is relatively simple with your shifter right here, your three pedals down there, which by the way are spaced perfectly for heel toe downshifts. I would say the storage space in here is pretty middle of the road. There's a slot between the two seats to put things as well as a small center console. And the other thing to note is that there are no cup holders in the interior of the Boxster. However, Porsche had the solution to this of these things right here. This is pretty much a cup holder that folds up and attaches right above the air vent right there. So if you absolutely do need it, you can have it, but they are there from the get-go and that is something to know. And wrapping up my thoughts on the interior, I think it's a very simplistic and basic design, but it's done absolutely correct. It's extremely elegant, the leather package makes a huge difference, and it's a great place to be when you're driving this 1999 Porsche Boxster. <laughs> It's unbelievable to think that a used car of this quality is available under $10,000 right now, serving you a mid-engine, track-bred, analog performance machine. Everything about the 986 Boxster is raw and puts the driver in charge, which may be the very reason it was able to save Porsche. If you are in the market for an affordable sports car and willing to take a risk on maintenance costs, the 986 is absolutely in a class of its own. This has been a car review with Running to Redline. Be sure to subscribe to keep up with our future videos. Thank you for watching and have a great day.